Grand Theft Auto basically deals in the currency of controversy. And because of that, a lot of dumb people overreact to the games. That's why GameRanks is bringing you the top 10 dumbest Grand Theft Auto controversies. Number 10, the hot coffee minigame that was taken out of Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. Now, Grand Theft Auto is probably one of the most controversial things in the game industry, and it does everything it can to court that reputation. But the creators obviously dubbed the hot coffee minigame too much because they cut it. However, a lot of the code for it was still in the game when they released it, and PC modders were able to bring it out. For those unfamiliar, the minigame is actually a minigame that involves sexual intercourse between CJ and and whatever woman he is with at the time. If you were old enough, you remember the world flipping its shit. The mature rating on the game was quickly swapped out to an adults only rating, despite the fact the game is not even accessible without downloading changes to the game. Rockstar actually had to remove the code from the game and re-release it in order to get the mature rating back. Again, despite the fact that you actually had to download a mod for the game in order to access it. That's basically the same thing as having to download a mod for the game that has a new sex minigame in it anyway. I'm getting riled up about it now. The mod itself actually cost Rockstar Games more than $20 million, all because of something they cut from the game. The lesson here is when you cut something from a game, get rid of all traces of it, otherwise it's basically like you left it in the game. Number 9, Jack Thompson. Ugh. Jack Thompson. Jack Thompson was obsessed with Grand Theft Auto for many years. In fact, recent discussions with him indicate that he still is. But what I specifically want to talk about with Jack Thompson is an event in 2007 when Jack Thompson wrote a letter to the mother of the creator of Grand Theft Auto. It's kind of the shittiest way you can deal with something you don't like, and I'm fairly certain that the creator of Grand Theft Auto's mother was already aware that he was the creator of Grand Theft Auto and what Grand Theft Auto is. But what Whatever. He made sure to tattle the Strauss Zelnick's mother that Grand Theft Auto is a murder simulator, and also that quote unquote the pornography and violence that your son traffics in is the kind of stuff that most mothers would be ashamed to see their son putting into the hands of other mothers' children. Just to get real with you for a moment, I believe that art does have some kind of influence, but I also believe that Jack Thompson is a dipshit and doesn't know what he's talking about. And do you know why? Because he goes on to question Strauss Zelnick's upbringing and says that his mother should be ashamed of herself. He then also went on to say that she spared the rod and spoiled the child, implying that maybe she should have beat him, which I don't know about you, but I think it's fucking bullshit. Number 8, The Torture Scene. In Grand Theft Auto 5, there is a mission called By the Book, in which players are ordered by the FBI, who is essentially using their power to force you to do things that maybe you wouldn't have done otherwise. Yes, I'm implying that most criminals wouldn't otherwise torture people, well, except maybe Trevor. Trevor didn't seem to care. In fact, that's kind of why people didn't really like it so much outside of the Grand Theft Auto community. The mission was actually supposed to be satirically critical of the use of torture to gain information from suspects. However, being Trevor kind of basically made it into a comedy scene, a lot of people didn't appreciate that part and felt it kind of derailed the satirical elements of the scene. However, if people worded it that way, this really wouldn't be controversy, it'd be criticism. And there's a big difference between the two. One is perfectly welcome to criticize something, whereas controversy is usually people acting like a bunch of assholes because their fifis got hurt. What I had described up until now falls under the criticism category. Where I went though, falls squarely into the controversy category. People flipped out over this. I remember people saying that Rockstar employees should actually be tortured over these scenes. And oh sure, that definitely resolves the issue of torture. You know, torturing artists. I don't know, Grand Theft Auto really is a lightning rod for the worst types of controversy on both ends. Number 7, the treatment of certain ethnic and racial groups. If you remember in Grand Theft Auto Vice City, people weren't too happy about the depiction of Cubans and Haitians. Cuban and Haitian advocacy groups argued that the game might incite violence against members of both of their communities, specifically because it dehumanized and encouraged the killing of members of either gang. A lawsuit was actually filed over the issues, and Rockstar didn't win it. Number 6, full frontal nudity in Grand Theft Auto The Lost in the Day. A Liberty City congressman, over time, gave you missions involving the political climate and manipulating it. And during a cutscene from one of those missions, he gets out of bed and is entirely nude. And when we say entirely nude, I mean full frontal male nudity. But parents just don't understand. What was clearly meant as a means to show that this gentleman had no shame whatsoever, and probably a means to show that parents everywhere
everywhere have a massive double standard regarding what they want their kids to see and what they want their kids not to see, which they played right into. Let me be the first to say that yeah, penises aren't that fun to look at, but like a lot of things that are legitimate satire in the Grand Theft Auto series, it had a point. Or should I say, tip. <laughs> no, I shouldn't. Number five, Australia. In 2008, Grand Theft Auto 4 was on its way, and Rockstar had confirmed that the version released there would not be edited in any way. Oh, but that turned out not to be the case. In order to get the MA15 Plus rating, the company actually had to produce a special version of Grand Theft Auto 4 that specifically complied with the Australian classification system, meaning it was edited. Now, nobody was really that happy about this, and the reason for it is probably because they had said that it would not be edited. Now, I'm not from Australia, but all I know when somebody tells me something and then goes back on it, I like to throw a boomerang right through their face. That's not a censored video game. This is a censored video game. Number four, Mothers Against Drunk Driving. Okay, so in Grand Theft Auto, there's drunk driving. I think we all know that. And Mothers Against Drunk Driving, not a big fan. They actually said, drunk driving is not a game and is not a joke. Drunk driving is a choice, a violent crime, and it's also 100% preventable, which, Duh. I'm not saying that there isn't a serious cultural problem that certain people, for whatever reason, think that it's okay, but it's definitely not Grand Theft Auto's fault. And on top of that, they depict drunk driving in kind of a not encouraging it way. The main character of the game in question, the one that they had a shit fit about, the game doesn't stop you because, frankly, it's an open world game and they try to do everything that they can to allow you to do whatever you want. However, the game actually does provide some context for your actions as not being good. Number three, killing sex workers for money. Now in Grand Theft Auto 3, they added sex workers to the mix. And the simple act of showing something that's considered a crime is controversial. I don't know, but we're supposedly sex positive enough as a society not to care. I don't care. But one thing that people were particularly upset about was that you could pay them, you know, per sec, and then kill them and get your money back. Now, part of the point was that they wanted you to be able to do anything you could think of. And in Grand Theft Auto, that meant a lot of things that you would never, ever, ever do in real life, and not just because of the consequences, but because, frankly, it's wrong to kill people. Now, people really like to get pissy about this, in particular. And I'm not going to try to excuse it, because it's your right to feel however you want to feel. But I think a lot of people objected to this specifically not because of the killing aspect of it, but just because there are sex workers in the game. Which I think is kind of fucked up, because having sex versus, you know, death. Number two, a guy named Ryan Chinnery was arrested in the UK on charges of a series of attempted rapes and bodily harms. Most people surrounding the case seemed to try to make it come off like the Grand Theft Auto games influenced his actions. However, the entire Grand Theft Auto series, and I say the entire Grand Theft Auto series, from 1 to 5, has no events, story or not, that include sexual assault. There are a few brief mentions of it, but out of all the things that one would try to say Grand Theft Auto influenced, sexual assault actually not a valid one because it never truly even deals with the subject. And finally, number one, in December 2013, actress Lindsay Lohan decided that Rockstar had used her likeness to create the woman in a lot of the artwork used to promote the game, and in July 2014, about six months later, actually sued Rockstar Games over it. She claimed that the character of Lacey Jonas was an absolute 100% copy of her. Now you're looking at a picture of her right now. That don't look a damn thing like Lindsay Lohan. And if she acts like Lindsay Lohan, uh, that's called called satire, and that's actually called satire. I mean, that's actually 100% satire. If this character was an exact copy of Lindsay Lohan that looked like Lindsay Lohan and was used to make fun of Lindsay Lohan, there's absolutely zero that anyone could do about it. Like, does anybody ever sue Saturday Night Live for depicting them? No, because it's not against the law, any law, civil or criminal. There's no precedent for being able to have yourself removed from something like that if it is critical of you. And the fact that the character character bears no actual physical resemblance to her, as she claims it to, all but cements that. So much of what has been brought against Grand Theft Auto is just ridiculous. I mean, I'm not saying that there is nothing wrong with Grand Theft Auto, but nobody ever actually points them out. They just get all pissy over the things that, well, are clearly engineered for people to get pissy over. In fact, I'm shocked that they still take the bait for it in 2015, but they do. The next Grand Theft Auto is going to be incredibly controversial. Dis 
despite people knowing exactly what Grand Theft Auto is and what it does, and not realizing that if they have any legitimate problems with the game, flipping the hell out about it isn't really how to fix it. The latest example of this is BBC's made-for-TV movie about the creation of Grand Theft Auto. Uh, what exactly is this random made-up bollocks? What's your favorite controversial moment in Grand Theft Auto history? Leave us a comment to tell us. Also, don't forget to click the like button, it helps us immensely. Subscribe if you haven't already, because we upload daily videos, and the best way to see them first is that subscription. We thank you a whole lot for watching this video, and any of our videos for that matter. As always, we will see you next time.